We're going to look at some basic applications of exponential functions today, and we're going to be working with problems that involve exponential growth and exponential decay. So in the problems that involve exponential growth, that occurs when a value increases at a constant rate. Okay, so in today's problems, you're going to see percents as your rate of change. And we're going to be using this equation to solve those problems that involve exponential growth. Um, f of t equals a times 1 plus r raised to the power of t. So this plus sign right here is what um, I want you to pay attention to for the problems that involve exponential growth. For exponential decay, this occurs when a value decreases at a constant rate, right? We're looking at percents over time. So f of t equals a times 1 minus r raised to the power of t. So what do all of these variables represent? A represents an initial amount, your starting amount, your initial amount. R is your rate, and we're going to express this as a decimal. Okay, so we're going to be converting decimals or percents to decimals. And then t is time. So let's look at example number one. All we're doing is like plugging and chugging today. So in example number one, it says Watson made an original investment of $3,500. The value of this investment has increased 6.25% each year. Write an exponential function to model the situation, then find the value of the investment after 25 years. Okay, so it's increasing at a constant rate. So ding, 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 we're looking at an exponential function because it's increasing, we're looking at an exponential growth function. So I'm going to be using this um, formula right here. Now the first thing I want to do is label like each of the variables that we're given. So my initial amount is $3,500. So I don't have to write that dollar sign, but a is 3,500, the rate is 6.25%. What is that gonna be as a decimal? I'm gonna move that decimal to the left two places. So 0 0.0625, and then time is 25 years. Okay, so if I'm, I, the first thing I wanna do is write an exponential function. So a function of time is going to be, I'm gonna have my starting amount, right? So I'm using this formula. The starting amount is 3,500 times 1 plus that rate expressed as a decimal, so 0 0.0625 raised to the power of t. So that's the function. Now I'm going to find the value of the investment after 25 years. So I'm going to find the value after 25 years. So f of 25 is going to be 3,500 and I'm actually going to simplify what's inside of the parentheses. 1 plus 0 0.0625 is 1.0625 raised to the power of 25. And all you're going to do is just plug this into your calculator exactly as you see it. So pause the video and do that now. What you should have gotten is $15,932. And 78 cents. So here's your answer. We're talking about money, so we're making sure that we are rounding um, to the nearest hundredths place. So just make sure that you're rounding correctly. Okay, so this is an example of exponential growth. Let's look at our next problem. In our next problem, and I'm going to change colors here just because. If there are 1,000 bacteria in a culture and the bacteria increases by 50% per hour, how many bacteria will there be after six hours? Okay, so we're looking at an increase in a constant rate. Therefore, we're looking at an exponential function here. So we're starting out our initial amount, the initial bacteria is 1,000. And then it's increasing, so it's gonna be exponential growth. And you can still see in my video um, the formula that we're using. Oops, that'll go away right there. Oh my goodness. Okay, so the rate is going to be 0.5. And then the time in this situation is going to be 6. Okay, so that's hours. If it's increasing by this amount per hour, how many after 
you know, six hours. So let's first write um, our function. Our function of time is going to be, we've, we're starting out with a thousand bacteria. It's increasing, so times one plus that rate expressed as a decimal, which is 0.5, raised to the power of t. So there's my function. And now I want to find it, find the number of bacteria, the amount of bacteria after six hours. So we're looking at f of six equals 1,000. And I like to go ahead and simplify what's inside the parentheses. So one plus 0.5 is 1.5 raised to the power of six. So go ahead and pause this video and plug that into your calculator now. And you should have gotten 11,391. That is your answer. And this is another example of exponential growth. And these are just your basic um, applications of exponential functions. They're just basic word problems. And hopefully you've seen stuff like this before. Um, this is meant to be an Algebra 2 lesson. Um, so we're just going through four quick examples and I'm going pretty quickly. So if you need an algebra two lesson or an algebra one lesson over this, I go a little bit slower um, and I'll put a link um, actually in the video and you can click on it in the upper right hand corner of this video um, and that'll be a link to my algebra one lesson over this. So let's look at example number three, a company with an initial debt of $280,000 in 2005 reduced its debt Okay, by 12% each year. So it's reducing it by a constant rate. It's decreasing by a constant rate. So it's going to be exponential decay. Write an exponential function to model the situation, then find the debt the company had left in 2011. And that should not be a question mark. That should be a period. So the first thing we're going to do is label A, R, and T. So A, our initial amount. How much did we start with? We started with $280,000. And then the rate that it is decreasing or getting reduced is 12% as a decimal, that's 0.12. And we wanna find the debt the company had after, well, how much time has elapsed? Well, that's 2011 minus 2005. How many years is that? That's six years, okay? So a time is six. So whenever you're looking at years, um, you can just subtract them and that'll give you the number of years that have passed. So now let's plug this into our exponential decay problem. So our function time is going to be our starting amount, which is 280,000. And in this case, it's one minus 0.12 raised to the power of t. So that's that's your big difference in um, these formulas, right? One plus the rate versus one minus the rate. And now I'm going to simplify this. So a function f of six is going to be 280,000. And then I'm going to simplify this one minus 0.12. Well, what is that? It's actually 0.88 raised to the power of six. And I want to point something out right here. A lot of test questions might give you something like this, like this step that might give you this function, right? So f of t equals 280,000 times 0.88 raised to the power of six. And they'll say, is this exponential growth or does this represent exponential decay? Well, because this right here is less than one, because it's between zero and one, that will show you that it's exponential decay. Okay, that's that's your key, um, the key um, point in this, right? So exponential decay. And then the other question might say, what is the rate of decay? Or at what rate is the function decreasing? And a lot of students want to go 0 0.88. Nope, it's not that. What you can do is 1.0 minus 0.88 and you'll get 0.12 and you'll say okay it's 12 percent it's decreasing at a rate of 12 percent so i just want to point that out because that's a big like test question for these types of problems so now let's plug in this 280,000 times 0.88 raised to the power of six into your calculator pause the video and do that now you should have gotten 130,000 dollars Oh, I'm sorry, $130,033.14. Let's make sure I'm reading 
the money correctly. 130,000 and 33, $33.14. Oh my gosh, I'm not even reading it correctly. 130,000, $33.14. Okay, let's move on to the last problem. Number four. Oh, and I want to point out that's exponential decay. Moving on to problem number four. Simon purchased a new car for $65,000. It depreciates at a rate of 15% each year. Write an exponential function to model this situation, then determine what the car will be worth in eight years. Okay, then determine. Okay, we need to fix some typos in here. Okay, so in this particular problem, A is starting amount, $65,000. It's how much Simon purchased that car for. The rate at which it's depreciating is 15%. Let's convert that to a decimal and you get 0.15. And then the time, we're looking to see what the car will be worth in eight years. So let's first write a function of time. Okay, I know this is going to um, be an exponential function because it's decreasing at a rate. Okay, that's a percent um, each year. So um, I know it's exponential decay because it's depreciating or going down. So we're starting out with $65,000 and we are decreasing. So one minus 0.15 raised to the power of T. And now I'm gonna rewrite this function, replacing time with eight. So we're looking for F of eight equals 65,000. And now what's gonna go in here? One minus 0.15 is 0.85 raised to the power of eight. So again, I'm just gonna ask you a couple questions. If you're given that, um, function right there, 65,000 times 0.85 raised to the power of 8. Does this show exponential growth or decay? Exponential decay because of this right here. And then uh, what is the rate of decay? What is the rate at which the car is depreciating each year? It's going to be 1.0 minus 0.85 and you'll get 0.15, so 15%. Just make sure you do that. Pause the video and plug this in now. And for example number four, you should have gotten $17,711.88. Okay, $17,711.88. And that is your answer to number four. This is an example of exponential decay. So we've got two examples for exponential growth. Two examples for exponential decay, and that concludes your notes over just your basic applications of exponential functions. I hope it was helpful.